Hello, everybody. Welcome back to episode six of Coach's Corner, where we put two soccer coaches in the same virtual space and we see what happens. As always, my name is Will Selden. Joining me again this week is head coach and sporting director of the Richmond Kickers, Darren Sawatsky. Darren, thanks again for joining me. Nice to talk uh, talk with you again, Will. Indeed, indeed. Um, so today I want to switch it up a little bit. Uh, the, the past couple of weeks we've been talking about kind of the, the X's and O's and the hard stuff of coaching. And today I want to focus on kind of the X factor and, and um, take a look into player management and stuff like that. Um, and so from a fan's perspective, because I think everyone who works at the kickers is a fan of the kickers first and foremost. Um, so from a fan's perspective, I'd love to get to a little bit more information and, and backstory on some of the players. Um, I know we have some really interesting signings this year and, and myself, and I'm sure the Richmond community would love to hear a little bit, a little bit about that. Specifically, um, I'd love to start off with a little bit of information on our new striker, Emiliano. Um, I know a little bit about him, but I'd love to hear a little bit of his backstory because I know it's super interesting. Uh, yeah, well, you know, I'm, uh, I'm super lucky, uh, because I wasn't the greatest soccer player, but, uh, uh, I got to play pro soccer and with each year you, you review, uh, whether or not you're going to stay in an area or whether a coach wants to keep you around. So I was a, a journeyman pro who played in a lot of places and where as a player, I probably wanted to stay in one place more than I, than I moved. It actually helps me as a coach because it really broadened my network of people and, I really draw on that when it comes to player selection and, and how we build teams. And, you know, I have a particular way that I want uh, us to play with the kickers. And uh, when I started to look around based on the players that were existing and were coming back, I knew what we needed and, and finding a, a veteran goal scorer uh, that still has uh, gas in the tank. Uh, I went looking and, and through a friend of mine uh, who I've worked with before and has great connections in South America, he, he put some guys forward and Emiliano just, just shot up. You know, it's, uh, he, he was great on film and. Tolido. Sigue Tolido. Escapa Tolido. Esta puede ser buena para Banfield. Tolido. Mete para Terzagri. Gol! Gol! De Banfield! A los 45 minutos. My my bad Spanish on the phone. He was a great guy to talk to, and uh, you know, from there, I, I we couldn't be more happy to have him here. Interesting. So there's so many different layers of that. I feel like, and one of the questions that um, I I had was during your career when you moved around so much as a player and a little bit as a manager. I I hear you say that helps you, which is an interesting way to look at it. Um, I know when I was younger, um, I was I was so obsessed with this idea of like being a one club man, even though I was a kid. Um, but I think that's really interesting to, to hear that it broadens your network and, and here you are down the road as a coach and you're kind of reaping the reward for that. Um, but talk to me a little bit about the the beginning of that relationship with Emiliano. You mentioned your lackluster Spanish. I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure it was enough to get the job done, but talk to me a little bit about that. Um well, you know, I, I will say just before I talk about him with something you made me think about, you know, with the Bosman ruling way back in the early 90s where players were able to move back and forth across countries and leagues, that's when I think it really started in soccer where guys went from being a 20-year guy who got a testimonial and, a, and you know, whatever. It just really changed. And I think that, that really in American pro sports, it took hold. But, you know, the – Emiliano was looking for an opportunity to play outside of, of where his comfort zone was. You know, he played for uh, Almeida at Banfield in Argentina, and Almeida is now the coach of uh, the San Jose Earthquakes in MLS. So, you know, he was exposed to some really high-level coaching on a, on a really good team with a lot of players that had gone through there. And, you know, he had since played for a few other teams. And, you know, in our country, as crazy as it sounds, pro sports is probably more stable than in some other countries. And sometimes, you know, you don't get paid or, you know, you, your, your your player transfer gets really, really messed up based on the fact that teams don't want to let you go or whatever. And I got lucky. I got really lucky. You know, the timing was right. He was ready to to make a move and have an opportunity. And, man, I, I, I just have to tell you that his, his professional approach to – 
uh, our preseason and his interaction with our players. I mean, these younger guys on this team, they don't even know how lucky they are having a guy like him around. Yeah, I can imagine. And I think, you know, bringing someone with that kind of experience and I'm sure it lists everybody as well as, you know, contributes on the field to, to that success as well. So that's really cool. Um, I'm interested in kind of the, the betting in process for a player like that. And, you know, maybe he could give more detailed answers, but I'm curious as to how you feel like that's going with, with a player who, who's come from another country who maybe doesn't speak the language as well as the other guys. How do you feel like that's going for him? Well, he's a, he's a veteran professional, you know, his, his approach to training, he, it was a little slow starting in the preseason, which we expected because that's what he's used to. He's used to, to incrementally easing his way into competition and, you know, he is, his fitness level needed to come up. But, you know, after about the fourth week of preseason, you started to see some really special uh, stuff out of him. You know, he, he scored a couple of really good goals and then, then, then we all got shut down. You know, I think he was really hitting his stride, but, you know, he's, he's learning to speak English. You know, we do this thing where we text where he texts in English and I text in Spanish and uh, anybody on the outside watching would probably laugh hysterically, <laughs> but we don't use translation or any of that stuff we just try to slog through learning and you know when we when we see each other uh outside of 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 the telephone and we see each other face to face it's always he tries to speak english and i try to speak spanish i think he's really grown you know his wife and his daughter are up here as well um and you know he he says they're doing great and they really enjoy being in the u.s so uh it's a, a huge cultural experience that I don't, I don't think everybody really understands i mean here's Here's somebody who's never left Argentina and, you know, comes to America, you know, brings his wife and his daughter and within a month and a half is is confined to his apartment <laughs> uh, based on a worldwide pandemic. I, I don't know if you could really uh, I, don't, I don't I don't know how he's dealt with that, but but I'm, I'm so impressed with him as a human being because he's he's great. He's easy going and he's really helped guys relax and know that it's going to be OK. Yeah, I I can't imagine just that entire situation. I mean, that, that is crazy to move to a new country with a new team, new teammates, new management, and then this, this massive worldwide thing strikes. So kudos, I mean, kudos to all the players. I'm sure it's, it's not easy, but um, I know they're plugging along. So I'm sure that he kind of brings a certain level of leadership just with his seniority and his experience. Um, and I'm switching back into my coach role here from a fan. Um, but I'm, I'm curious as to your kind of perspective on leadership within a team um, the importance of it for you and how you identify and establish leadership in a team. I know that there are some kind of senior players in the team who probably take on that role. Um, but what's your kind of overarching perspective on that as a soccer coach? Um, I'm a believer that the leaders are, are born. I mean, you can get better and you can work to get along in groups, but there are people that, that, that have a, an it factor that people follow. You know, I think that you can designate captains but a lot of times captains are, are the ones that they kind of police the the setup that you have. You know, they police the, the rules you have and they help keep guys in line. But leaders, like if you take Emiliano, for example, he leads by example. You know, he he, he works hard. He, he puts in a shift every day. He uh, he doesn't take breaks on or off the field. And, and that's good for young players. You know, you have... You have veteran guys like Kyle Venter who are a little bit of both. They're good at helping groups understand why you do what you do, uh, and they show up every day. I mean, uh, you know, Kyle finished, I think, fifth in a yo-yo test as a veteran center back. That's uh, that's amazing. I mean, and not because he's not capable, just because it's, uh, you know, here's a veteran leader who's already done it, and, he, and, and you know, you have Akira Fitzgerald. You know, Kyle and, and Akira are really our designated leaders and Akira is a goalkeeper who finished in the middle, upper middle of the pack on the yo-yo test. And he, you know, he just, he, he brings a, a yoga presence and a, and a mind, body, soul presence to our team that, um, you know, those, those things come out naturally. And, you know, as a coach, you want to look at that. And I'm really lucky to have them as part of our team because I can lean on those guys because uh, they're really good at helping the group understand why we're doing what we're doing. Yeah. So give me an insight, if you will, into how captains are selected at the professional level. I mean, I've been, I've been in youth teams where, you know, all the whole team votes on it. I've been in teams where the coach just appoints captains or ca a captain. How does that work for at the higher level? I can't speak for what other coaches do. 
I, I don't I don't know. Everybody's got their examples, and obviously we read about it and and that. But for me, um, I I watch behavior. You know, I don't designate a captain going into a, a preseason. I allow behavior to dictate that. And you see naturally that leaders they step up and they take ownership and responsibility a lot of times for things that you haven't even decided to start talking about, like setting goals or uh, no, we're not going to act a particular way. We're, you know, this is how we're going to do it. And I, you know, I try to set the tone with, with expectations in the beginning of a season. And then as you go through the preseason, you, if you're lucky, uh, people naturally, um, they, they present themselves you know, with our, our team this year, there's a lot of uh, good veteran guys with a lot of experience. So we're really lucky, um, you know, and, and, and these guys that we've talked about so far, they, they rise to the top. You know, they show up every day. They're great examples. Uh, nobody's perfect. But uh, for me, it, it presents itself naturally. Um, I don't, you know, voting on it and, and all those kinds of things. I think that's a youth soccer thing. I think at the pro level, it's it's pretty defined who the leaders are and you need to give them responsibility to help your team win. Yeah, I, I think that's probably true in my experience as well. I mean, like I said, I remember when I was younger, coaches would um, have the team vote on it. Um, I guess just to establish a little bit of kind of crowd responsibility for it maybe. Um, and then as I, I progressed and got older, it was more of a an appointed thing. And this year on my the high school team that I helped coach, it was an appointed thing. But like you said, we go through preseason, we see who shows up, we see who sets the example early anyway. Um, so a lot of the times, you know, they kind of appoint themselves, for lack of a better term. But that's interesting to hear from a, a professional coach. I, that's cool. Um, so I, I touched briefly on this, this youth coaching thing. Um, and I know that there are a couple guys in the team who are youth coaches in, in the, the Kickers Youth Club. Um, so I'm wondering how that impacts their game as professional players, or, or does it? Um, I'm sure that um, over time, you know, just being around the game, you learn more. But I'm wondering if fulfilling that coach's role helps them learn as well. Uh, well, first, I know I know through what people have told me that there's been a long history of uh, professional kickers players coaching in the community, and we we highly recommend and encourage our our coaches, our players, excuse me, and our coaches for that matter, to be in the community, not just on the coaching level, but to be out there and and be a part of what happens in Richmond. Uh, you know, that's that's my philosophy, and I, I think it builds on the great philosophy that's been here for a long time. Um, you know some of these older older <laughs> some of these mid range to older range pro pro guys are you know they're supplementing their income by coaching and we want to work with them on that both because we want them to have a great opportunity in the community but also because you know it's they got to make a living and the beautiful thing that spawns from that is they grow as players because they look at it differently because they have to manage kids or young adults or whoever they're coaching and i think it really helps their perspective you know, you know, guys like Scott Thompson and, and Greg Bain have been a part of the Richmond Kickers much longer than I have. And, you know, they're, they're entrenched in the community and coaching and, uh, you know, kids come and they're like, hey, coach. And, you know, they'll actually discuss with me, uh, you know, what they're doing uh, in training. And it's kind, of, it's kind of fun to banter back and forth because it helps them understand what I'm trying to accomplish with them as players. Yeah, I, I remember, like you said, it's been kind of a tradition in the, the Kickers Club for a long time. And I think I mentioned earlier, I grew up playing for the, the youth club, the, the travel system in there. Um, and so I mentioned I had Sasha Gores, who's a longtime player for the pro team. And I definitely remember like our entire team showing up to games um, to support our coach as he was playing, which was a super cool thing. Um, you know, it, it happened with a couple different coaches I had. And, and I, I mentioned I had Lee and he was the manager for a while. Um, so it is just a super kind of cool tradition that I feel like we have going for us where not only are they players and you can go watch them on the weekend and, and support them, but you can also interact with them in the community at, at different events just around town. And also you can play for them. Um, I think that's super cool and, and kind of a unique thing that we have to offer. And like you said, it, it helps the players as well. So that's really cool. It's one of the neatest things about Richmond and really attracted me to coming here was there's a lot of pro players that, you know, they, I don't know if retired is the right word, but they settled into the next thing that they were doing after playing for the kickers. 
You know, uh, I talked to Matthew Delacott, who I don't I don't know very well, but I'm learning to know. And he's working in a business that we use sometimes with the with the kickers. And he's a he's a legend here. You know, obviously, Rob Ucrop's a legend here. And, you know, both Lee and, and, and Sasha and, and Michael Callahan and all of these guys that have have played for the team and are coaching you soccer around here. I hope that they they tell their kids every night, you know, the, the kickers pro team is the greatest thing. And, and you know, you got to come check it out. And it's it's good to emulate that, you know, because the pro team really has to be the top of the pyramid in your community. And I think that's a really good way to bridge it. You know, our, I highly encourage our guys and, you know, to, to coach in all the youth soccer that you can in Richmond. You know, we we fully support all the clubs here and, and we want kids to grow and have a great experience and, and we want them to come to games and see how we do at the pro level. Yeah, for sure. For sure. That was a, a big part of my development as a youth player um, was going to see pro games at the weekend. So, so I definitely encourage kids to do that as well. Um, well, just before we go, I want to continue to encourage everybody out there to continue to send in your questions um, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, whatever platform you want to use using the hashtag ask CC. We got a couple of great questions so far, um, but we'd love to have those keep coming in so we can do a, a great Q&A segment coming up here in the next few weeks. So thank you in advance for that. Um, and Darren, thank you so much again for joining me and, and filling me in on, on all those different things. Appreciate it. Awesome, man. Have a good day, Will. Thanks so much.